this but uh it touched my heart in that it talks about the holocaust survivor in new york city and uh, the book is a kind of a puzzle um is it an accident or is it the holocaust survivor trying to commit a suicide and that's when it really i started looking at my mother uh, from a very different angle and really trying to to remember the stories that she would tell me when I was a young child. I started writing to Eli Wiesel and I still have his letters. At that time, that was before the internet, before emails. Mm -hmm. So he would write to me, you know, short little letters. He told me I must have my mother write down her stories and that she must tell them and we must preserve her stories. So it took still took a little bit longer and I didn't really understand what it meant for my mother to go back into her memories, to bring those stories back up to the surface. I had not a clue what it meant, you know, for her to do that. But uh, she did, she did them for me and she wrote her stories in Polish. And there's one page that um, uh, jumps out at me that she talks about how she had to stop writing because she was crying so hard and uh, that the tears were staining the pages. And then she said, she says that paper is patient and it will wait. And then the next day she resumed her writing. And um, so that's how, you know, we came to this point. But um, it was because of Ellie Wiesel that I really kind of made her write down those stories. It still took, you know, quite a few years. She wanted to be the one to publish her stories. And, and we kind of tried twice to do that, but my own life got in the way and it didn't. And on the day she died, I, the, the thing what I did was I took out the backs of those uh, journals and they were written all uh, array of papers, just single sheets of papers. I still have those notes and I spread them in the study and I, that my shiva lasted a month because this, I was pouring over those pages and, and I was on that day, I was determined that her story will be told and I tried uh, soon after uh, that I, I remember I tried to to talk to to uh, a, a group of people and I couldn't do it I was crying <laughs> so I knew that I had to a healing time would have to go by and I had to get to work and um, I started to research her papers because there was a lot of history over there and slowly but surely, I, I page by page, and it took a long time. Uh, and her stories are incredible. And what her stories really did for me was brought back to surface my own memories. And before the pages were pristine, I started contacting professors around the world who were willing to kind of stand by me and uh, help me. And um, they, they really encouraged me, including Quaisel, and wrote little blurbs for me, made sure that I did this, made sure I didn't give up. Um, about two years ago, I got a small little grant from Hadassah Brandeis, and with that money, I hired, uh, I hired a little editor who was wonderful. She made the pages pristine. And after that, uh, one of my professors in England, a friend, he showed it to his publisher and they fell in love. And here we are today. Um, but I, what, the most important thing that I, I see from my end is that um, when I started working on the book, I did not realize that uh, how many Holocaust denying sites there are. Mm -hmm and broke my heart, but also how few, only six states in America um, teach Holocaust uh, in K through 10 in schools, and that's New York, New Jersey, Illinois, Florida, California, Pennsylvania was just added. Um, 
So I am determined to give the book especially to high school students. I think this is where it's important. That I think knowing history for me is so important. <coughs> and so high school kids, uh, college ki kids, I think are a little bit more suave in that area. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, I hope so. I <laughs> I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's at the at the high school, you know. Uh, level that I am really trying to reach out to and that's my mission I am willing to travel wherever you know whoever will invite me to talk I, I think um, kids need to know they need to know how important it is to, to know things not, and not just about Holocaust because uh, right. Holocaust did wipe out Europe's Jews there's no question about it and especially in Poland and we need to remember them because in the words of uh, Elie Wiesel not to remember them and not to talk about them is to kill them again and my book especially talks about the Jewish community in, in Poland before the Holocaust because there was a thriving vibrant uh, community uh, for almost a thousand years mm -hmm. It was the biggest uh, next to like New York City, and it was wiped out in six short years. So to me, that's important is to celebrate the life before, and that's what my mother wrote about, and that's what I want to celebrate, and also how they survived throughout Russia, and as desperately as they survived in Russia, it really was life for them. And then after they came back to um, Poland to look for life, yep, they found none. And uh, I talk about our life under communism. Mm. And then in 1968, uh, we left a couple of years before that, but in 1968, the Polish government asked the Jews to leave once again. And that's kind of what the book is about. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, I'd love to have some excerpts from the book. Um, I, you know, um, I went to high school uh, in the Bronx, Bronx High School of Science, and to me, we had the only Holocaust museum, which was a section in the library. And uh, Mr. Elenko spearheaded the whole project, and he um, wanted to educate the student body. He died a few years ago, and uh, you just spur that memory saying that you want to proliferate this information in high school so I would welcome you to uh, connect with Bronx High School of Science who already has a museum oh, and wow. they would probably be, be like very happy thrilled. if you'd even, it's maybe even one, it's speak there. one of there. the top high schools in the entire country academically. Yeah. yeah, if you can connect My me to it. There now. Right. Starting there. Yeah. You know, I sometimes it requires an introduction but I uh, just took my book over. They went to uh, Los Verges Unified School District and they were always taken to the Wiesenthal uh, Museum of Holocaust, mm -hmm. which uh, took my breath away because it's done so well. Uh, <coughs> it first takes you through the uh, Germany, the, the life in Germany before and then abruptly it ends. Yeah. And I remember like gasping for air actually. Uh, it, because it so abruptly ends, uh, but uh, our high school takes them there too. But I would be if there's any introduction, you know, I'm looking for for anything like that. I'll how how long you, are you planning to be on the East Coast? Well, I'm leaving now, but I'll come back. Right I'll now? be back in October. Okay. I'm actually will be October. most likely. I will be speaking at the Jewish um, survivors and children. Um, the meeting in um, Texas, which the annual meeting, the next one is in Houston, Texas. Uh, yeah, I think October. it's Houston, Texas, in o end of October. But you know, I'll be here in October. I could make sure I come a day or two earlier. Okay. I have my grandparents and my mother is from Lublin. Uh huh. And as you, when I was young, I didn't understand the life. When I read uh, the Nobel Prize laureate Zinger uh, about the rabbinate of uh, my parents from Lublin, 
<coughs> it was so great for me to understand the life in the biggest community in the Poland uh, at this time. So, your book, the same, gives a, a lot of, I it, think... It connects to the yes, life you know, yeah, of before. Yeah. Because I think it's, very good. it's important to remember that Poland had a huge, huge community and so life, vibrant, vibrant so life before. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Walk, yeah. yeah, from Wolf became here, from right. Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. And one third of the population is Jewish before. Yeah. You know, in Poland, um, only 10% of Jews survived uh, the camps and mm. or underground. Mm. The rest survived throughout Russia. So, you know, you can imagine if there's 400 yeah. people somewhere in a room, like sure. 40 people survived. This is mind-boggling. Mm. This is really I, truly mind-boggling. 110,000 was killed. They represent 39% of the citizens of the city. The book probably goes into the prelude to leading to 1939 and the invasion, what was happening in 38, 37. Yes. The yeah, tranquility, etc. Yeah. And then show the uh, shock of uh, the 39 invasion and what preceded that. Okay, and your mother's escape uh, to uh, Uzbekistan. Well, she escaped first. Oh, but that, that's the most harrowing part, harrowing part of the book. Yeah. In her escape and pretending she's dead. Right, right, yes. Yes, yes actually, a Russian The Russians were actually turning and turning them back. But don't tell us the No, book. I'm not don't telling you. Tell not, don't I'm tell just, the book. No, I may not read it. Tell no, me the ending. No, no, no. no, no. I, didn't, I didn't read it either. No, don't tell the book. I won't. I'll, just, you heard the I'll let you hang you in suspense. Let you, you, you hang in suspense. You heard the story, I heard, I, Go ahead, Marty, you'll be the life of the party. Marty. No, no, I'm just letting you hang in suspense Marty, right Marty, now. Roberta had a question. Go ahead. <laughs> what is this, Doctor Who? Roberta. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, actually, we had a, a, a showing of that uh, movie in, in the Wiesenthal Museum, but they said to bring a box of tissues. I said, okay, I'm watching it at home. <laughs> yeah, it's Which wonderful. movie was this? Paper Clips. Paper Paper Clips. It's about yes. junior high school children yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did see collecting it. I did paper clips yeah, yeah, in a town yeah, in the yeah, south yeah, 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 where they had no, absolutely no, no knowledge. Knowledge. Right. No knowledge. Yeah. And they realized of how uh, they had to collect six million. Right. Okay, yeah. And now and I remember. They got the stories from okay, all now over I the world. Right, right, right. But right. the thing is, I wonder oh, if it's still... It's know, still, yeah, they actually still, they they got a hold of one of the actual cards. Yeah. And they, yeah, 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 and that that transport oh, Jews into the right, and they made that into a museum, museum yeah. right. But I'm just wondering if it's still, if they're still, you know, uh, working at it as hard, you know, because they had a lot of students that were involved. Well, I think they they, they just have it as a museum now. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we saw some one of those carts in uh, the uh, Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. The railroad carts. Did any of you see uh, uh, Ida? Ida? The movie Ida? Or Ida? Or Ida? No. You must see it, you guys. Oh, no, no. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which one? It won the Oscar for the best foreign <laughs> film. Which one? Ida. 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 You must see that. No, the, I'm not it's a perfect movie. 